Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another video. And today, I would like to share my thoughts on Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, which is a 2D fighting game developed and published by Arc System Works, which originally released in 2018, though it has been re-released in what's called the Special Edition, and that includes all the DLC characters, as well as the 2.0 story mode. And this game is available on all the major platforms, such as the PS4, which is the version I played, Nintendo Switch, PC, and just recently, as of 2023, it was released on Xbox consoles, on Xbox One, Series X, and Series S. Which, I don't know why it always takes so long for Xbox to get Japanese games, but, like I said, I played the PS4 version, so it's not really my problem. Uh, but man, I love this game, and let me just say, this game has turned me into a fighting game fan. Which, I actually should start with that. So, I'm not really too familiar with fighting games. I played a couple of them when I was younger, such as the Dragon Ball fighting games, like Dragon Ball Budokai, Budokai Tenkaichi, some of the Smash Brothers games, Super Smash Brothers Melee, and Super Smash Brothers Brawl. But it has to be a good 15 years since I played a fighting game. And I picked this game up on a whim almost a year ago now. I was just drawn by the cover because I love the, the design of the guy in the middle, Ragna the Blood Edge, the guy with the white hair. He's, he's the main character from the Blaze Blue franchise. And I saw the game for like 20 bucks. We all do this. You see a game on sale, it's like, oh, I'll play that eventually. Well, eventually finally came I played through this, and I, I loved it. I loved the story mode. The game handles things so well to newcomers because it, it's meant to be a fan service game for all these franchises, but if you're unfamiliar like myself, I mean, the only characters I knew going into this were the Persona characters. It explains things well enough so you get a good idea as to who the good guys are, who the bad guys are. It's an easy enough story to follow, but it's, it's fun, and that's all that matters. It's a fun storyline. I absolutely loved it. I loved it so much that I went back and I actually bought the other four Blaze Blue games. To my knowledge, there's two on the PS3 and two on the PS4. And then there's a bunch of other Blaze Blue media. There's light novels, manga, and anime, a mobile game. There's all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to be diving down the Blaze Blue rabbit hole, I suppose. But yeah, as to what this game's about, you can probably already tell with the title and, and, the, and the cover art there. Cross Tag Battle. It's a crossover of epic proportions featuring four major franchises with three other franchises that show up as DLC later on. So the four major franchises we have are Blaze Bloom, Persona 4, which they call it Persona 4 Arena, which, yes, Arc System Works developed Persona 4 Arena with the help of Sega and Atlas, and I believe there is a Persona 4 Arena on the PS3, and then Persona 4 Arena Ultimax on the PS4. And not only are there Persona 4 characters, but there's also Persona 3 characters in this game. There's also Undernight in Birth, which I had no idea what that was prior to playing this game. But it is also another 2D fighting game from Arc System Works, and there's two Undernight in Birth games. And then with the four major franchises, lastly we have Ruby. Which, Ruby I have heard of, but I've never seen it. It's a Western animated show, which you might not think it, it blends too well with the other three anime styles, but I mean, despite it being a Western animation, Ruby kind of has its anime influences, and me not knowing a thing about it, aside for, you know, it exists, and, you know, hearing Ruby before, um, I felt like the characters were handled well in this game, and I, I did enjoy them, so that's cool. Uh, but yeah, as for the DLC characters that show up later on in the other franchises, we have Arcana Heart, which is also a 2D fighting game. Senren Kagura, which is another big franchise, mainly video games and a few anime series. It's like a fan service game. And there's a great moment in the 2.0 story mode where Teddy from Persona 4 interacts with Yumi and he's, Oh, Yumi-chan, I'll protect you! <laughs> it's great, I loved it. And then finally, a series called Akatsuki Blitz Comp. Which again, I don't know what the hell that is, I had to look it up, it's another 2D fighting game. So, lots of love for our 2D fighting game fans here. There's over 50 characters, 
and it's just so much fun to play with the different characters, do the different builds. Um, up top, we have it's mainly dominated by the Blaze Blue characters, and you have a wide variety. Uh, going through the names real quick from left to right, we have Iron Tager, Makoto, New 13, Noel Vermillion, which Noel Vermillion became not only my favorite character to play as, but just my favorite character overall. I just love her personality. And I'm looking forward to learning more about her as I play the other Blaze Blue games. Ragna the Blood Edge, his I guess brother, <laughs> Jin Kisaragi, which if you if you select the two of them together as tag team partners, there's always a great quote with all the characters, but in particular, Jin Kisaragi goes, Brother, let's kill each other! <laughs> and Ragna's like, settle down, Jin, We're not, let's not do this right now. Let's settle down. <laughs> I'll deal with you later. It's so funny. But yeah, next to him, Jin Kisaragi, Rachel Alucard, Hazama, S, and Azrael. Then with Persona 4, we have Yukiko, Chie, Yosuke, Nu Yu Narakami. With Ruby, we have Ruby and Weiss. Under Night in Birth, we have Hyde, Lene, Waldstein, and Gordel. Future Kevin here with some of the character entrances. I'm sure there's a YouTube video with all of them, but these are just some of my favorites, so check them out. BROTHER! BROTHER! LET'S KILL EACH OTHER! Stop crying, you little punk. I'll deal with you later. Let's go, Noel! I'll leave you behind if you don't move quick! You too, Makoto! Keep up with me! Adachi-san. I still believe in our friendship. <laughs> and you're even dumber than I thought. Whether it be a sea of flames or hail of bullets, no obstacle can stand in our way. Hey there, sexy lady. I got some pretty nice curves myself. What do you want? Let's see how well your insulator cuts. Just watch! Time to go to work! This is getting fun, Blake! Well, it's not boring. Even if we know we win. And the main reason I played this game was for the story mode. I, I tried every mode out except for online because I don't pay for the online uh, PlayStation subscription or whatever. So, you know, I, I can't play online. But I did the versus mode, tactics, survival. But in particular, the story mode, which the game plays out like a visual novel. You'll get a good 15 to 20 minutes of, of visual novel cutscenes and then you'll have a battle. And the artwork is beautiful. There was one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that's just how beautiful the in-game character models are. In that they're 2D sprites that are animated so beautifully, they're going to stand the test of time forever. In 10, 15 years, when we look back on this game, and even when we look back on the Blaze Blue games from the PS3, they're going to look better than these ultra-realistic games like Last of Us and all this other nonsense that people are eating up. Uh, whereas my new waifu, Noel Vermillion, just look at her, man, look at her. And, and the way they, they translate from the drawn character art to how they look in the actual game, just fantastic. The way they move around is, is incredible. And um, I, I love the character designs. I know I'm putting an emphasis on Noel because she's my favorite, but... Take any character, they all look great, and just the way they move around, use their weapons, attack, it's its its so good. What a beautiful looking game. And I know it's not even that old, it came out in 2018, so it's six years old, but it looks incredible. And um, that's, I just wanted to add that. <laughs> so there you go. I, I looked for, for some that are as spoiler free as possible, but you get an idea here, because uh, there's no text or anything, so you don't know what's going on unless you played the game. But 
you see all our characters here. Great artwork. Best girl, Noelle Vermillion. I love her, man. Look at her. Beautiful. Uh, but not only do we have, like, epic battles, there's fun hijinks where you have the girls here making pudding and pancakes and stuff and <laughs> just eating. And uh, this is the scene when Teddy came to Yumi's rescue. <laughs> and they're all ice users, so they're... they're <laughs> They're racing each other, and Teddy's like, Don't worry, Yumi Chan, I'll protect you! So, lots of good stuff. Can you even blame Teddy for simping over Yumi, though? I mean, just look at her. This is one of the pieces of artwork you get after beating the game. And next to her is Mai Natsume from the Blaze Blue franchise. And I just wonder what would happen if there was an additional story segment where Teddy ran into her. Because, you know, Yumi is from the Senren Kagura franchise, which is basically a bunch of fan service games, and she's in a more conservative outfit than Mai is. So, <laughs> that's what I like to see. If they ever do a D more DLC to Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, we need an interaction with Teddy and Mai. Or how about Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle 2, a, a sequel game? That's, uh, that's my dream game for sure. For Teddy's sake. <laughs> there, there's also great interactions between. You know, like heroes interacting with villains. In one case, there's a character from Blaze Blue named Naoto Kurugane who teams up with Fadachi from Persona 4. And Naoto is going up against some some bad one of the guys is Azrael, who I think is a bad guy from Blaze Blue. And Adachi shows up, he's like, I'll lend you a hand, kid, don't worry. And Naoto says something like, man, you're one weird cop. <laughs> you know, you're you're a reedy old, old bastard. <laughs> it's just funny as hell. Uh, the voice acting in this game, incredible. There's so many great voice actors here, from Patrick Seitz to David Vincent, Christina V, Doug Erholtz, Mela Lee, DC Douglas, Eden Regal, Kirk Thornton, uh, all the characters from Persona 4 reprise their roles, like Johnny Young Bosch, Yuri Lowenthal, Aaron Fitzgerald, even characters like um, Mitsuru and Akihiko from Persona 3 show up, also being reprised by Tara Platt and Liam O'Brien. Uh, as far as I can tell, Under Night and Birth never had an English dub, so we have English dub for those characters for the first time. And such voice actors as Kyle McCarley, Sarah Williams, Keith Silverstein, Ian Sinclair. Uh, the Ruby characters all reprise their roles from the animation. And it's just so good. They, they did such an excellent job. Uh, I'm one of the people who prefer English dubs to Japanese voice acting. And it's just great. There was one more voice actor who I wanted to talk about separately. And that is Billy Kametz, who provided the English voice of Naoto Kurogane. Billy Kametz tragically passed away in 2022 at the age of 35 due to stage 4 colon cancer. So I just wanted to say, rest in peace, Billy Kametz. His legacy will live on forever, not only as Naoto Kurugane in the Blaze Blue franchise, but for all the other characters he voiced throughout his career. Most notably, his most famous role probably being Josuke Higashikata from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable. Rest in peace, Billy Kamets, and thank you for everything. Uh, like, and also another thing, the characters all have different play styles, of course. Like, we have really big, slow characters like Azrael, Iron Tiger, and there's even a character named Blitz Tank, <laughs> who is literally a tank, <laughs> you know, if you can believe that. But then you have, like, fast-paced characters like Naoto and Akihiko, who use their fists. You have Noel, who uses guns. Ragna uses this giant sword. And... The Persona characters use their Personas, Adachi uses a gun, like it's just, it's great. I loved it, I loved it. So, I don't know how many people there are that, that just play fighting games for the story. Like, I, I don't really think many study, many fighting games have a big story mode. Um, they're mainly just there for you to play with your friend or play online or, or whatever. 
But I do think from what I what I learned, just looking up more details about Blaze Blue, there's a lot of lore there, and they take their story modes very seriously. And that's why I went and bought the other four games, because you have to sort of play them in chronological order. And with this game being a big crossover, there's lots of fan service stuff. Like, you know, I got more of the Persona 4 references, knowing more about Persona, uh, and not really knowing much about the other characters. But I'd imagine if I were to revisit this game after playing all the Blaze Blue games, uh, because I, I do understand that Hazuma is a bad guy. Like, you can just tell he's a bad guy. And seeing him interact with Ragna, and he's like, Oh, Raggy, settle down, Raggy. <laughs> and there's a team up at some point as well. So, yeah, I definitely want to learn more about the Blaze Blue lore. But I strongly recommend this game. Uh, one thing I, I do have to say, though, is... And this is a practice for all fighting games. And I get why fighting games do it, is they release a game... And then they, they keep it going in, in the form of DLC. And some fighting games handle it better than others. In Blaze Blue's case, they had the season pass, which I think you pay $20 for. And you you get, when they release the new characters, you get them right away. But you can also just buy the characters individually. Like, I think each individual character is maybe 3 bucks or something. But you can buy the season pass for $20 and, and get it all. And they sort of drip feed it to you to keep the game going. Because as I said, the story mode is not that long. So you can finish it in, in a weekend. And it keeps you coming back. Because again, most of you all play fighting games for the online and, and co-op play. And that gives you incentive to return a few months from now. Like let's say they release new characters every three months. You come back every three months, test out the new characters, see the play style. And you go from there. So I get why fighting games... And, and the developers behind fighting games do that because it's, it's not only a way to make money but it's a way to get people to come back playing the games so you don't just play it for a weekend and then it's dead and um i can appreciate the season pass because you're just buying it at once but at the same time if you're going to buy this game at launch you're spending 60 dollars on the game plus 20 dollars on the season pass where in my case i bought the game for like 20 bucks and i actually did buy the season pass which, thankfully, there was a sale. I think I paid, like, $15 for the season pass. It was discounted a little bit. And I got all the, the DLC characters, as well as the 2.0 story mode, which is, you know, in the first story mode, you have the different paths. You have Ragna as the main character. You have Hyde as the main character. You have Yu as the main character. And you have Ruby as the main character. And then with 2.0, Naoto, who is another character from Blaze Blue, becomes the main character. And then he interacts mainly with, with the DLC characters. So, but yeah, I, I loved it. I strongly recommend the game. Uh, you can find it really cheap. I think it's like it's like less than twenty dollars now on the online store. You could probably get a used physical copy for twenty bucks or less. They just gotta remember if you're buying like the base game like I did, you have to spend more for the DLC to get the additional story content, the additional characters. Um, but yeah, that, that's just. See, I, I can nitpick it all I want, but that's just a, a trend that fighting games have. Like, gone are the days when you just complete a challenge, and that unlocks the character for you. Or you do the story mode, and that unlocks a character. No, now you have to pay for characters. Like, go, I was going through the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero stuff, and they're treating Gogeta and Broly as, like, six different characters in, in the way that Gogeta's one character... Super Saiyan Gogeta is another character. Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta is another character. So what should be one character with different cosmetics is being treated as three different characters. And that's just what fighting games do. But um, if you can just get past that, and I guess maybe my recommendation is just to look for fighting games when they go on sale. Uh, you're in for a treat with, with a fun story mode here. And you're in for an even more of a treat if you're more familiar with the characters. If you already play the other Blaze Blue games, if you actually know what Under Night and Birth is, if you've watched Ruby, I'm assuming most of you are familiar with Persona, because that's the only one I was familiar with. Uh, you're definitely in for a treat. Lots of great team-ups, and I will definitely return to this game after I play the other Blaze Blue games, and maybe I'll even play like Under Night and Birth and some of them. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know your thought in the comments down below and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Everybody have a great day and peace out. 99.